Hi, welcome back. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell have been on Capitol Hill this week and today in front of the House Financial Services Committee. They're talking about the economic recovery from the coronavirus pandemic. You may have heard the economy is doing okay right now. They are touting programs put in place so far, and they say they have a positive outlook on the horizon. But this comes as Congress is also trying to avoid a looming government shutdown. Seems like things are moving in the right direction, but who knows? Let's welcome in now the CEO of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo, also with us, business and market analyst Seth Denson, who has a great new column up on Newsmax.com. We'll talk about that in a second, but great to have everyone with us. Uh, Seth, first to you. I I'm so confused because, you know, you look at some of the economic indicators, things seem to be okay. You hear about Jay Powell and Janet Yellen telling us everything is good, could be better, but it's not bad. But really, I mean, you know, where do things stand, Seth? Give us some insight. Yeah, th these are the same people that said that this inflation is transitory, right? And that it would only last for a short period of time. They're and changing their tune down. on that one, aren't they? It's still here, and now they're saying that. By the way, Janet Yellen, who also is now saying if we don't raise the debt ceiling, we're going to see an economic collapse. By the way, I actually agree with her there, but she was the same person back in 2017 saying we'll never see an economic uh, collapse. The U.S. would never default on its debt. And so this is the problem when you have people, bureaucrats in D.C. that – spend the money, being asked questions by those who can't stop spending the money. Uh, this is a problem, and we don't get clarity. We get talking points. By the way, you mentioned that the outlook, what Yellen commented, she said, the medium-term outlook I'm optimistic on, and if anybody has any question as to what that means, uh, so do I. What does that mean? <laughs> Give me details. I can't what tell you what's going to happen optimism? tomorrow, Seth. I'm lost. I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow what? or next week, but medium term is some you know vague <laughs> kind of time in the future yeah. that we don't really know what's going on here. So what do you think, Melissa? Where is this going? Well, Jay Powell actually admitted today that they don't know how long that this inflation is going to continue because he actually said it's based on the supply chains and what's happening right now where there's two problems going on. One, we're having a problem getting the truckers to work to ship the goods. And two, there's a backup in the ports because, again, there's COVID restrictions and guidelines and we don't have enough workers. And then there's a demand. There's a demand for products and services because we were shut down for several months last year, or, or at least we were, for example, here in New York. And people now want to spend money, want to go and do things and buy things. And now we're getting into the holiday season, which is going to see more increased buying. And we just don't have the people working to be able to get the goods and services out there. So costs are going up. So we have inflation. And then we also have the Congress that wants to spend all of this money in this $3.5 trillion plan. And then, as Seth had mentioned, as far as the, the debt ceiling coming up to the deadline. So there's a lot going on right here. What I find interesting about what Janet Yellen said today is someone asked her today, one of the congressmen asked her today, do you think that this is going to cause zero? Because Jen Psaki had said that earlier in the week. She said yes. She actually said yes. I mean, that was the most irresponsible thing she could have ever possibly said. These people are so partisan. They should not be in these roles. Powell, i got to give him credit. He's trying, but I bet they don't renew his term. I bet he doesn't stay. Because this administration, if you're not on board with them 100%, yeah. yep. 1,000%, you're out. You're totally out. And Yellen is, or she would have said yes to that question, because she knows that that is totally wrong. Yeah, not one zero, 11 zeros. That's that's 11 zeros is what we're talking about here. Uh, Seth, so tell us tell us what's up with your new Newsmax piece. Yeah, listen, I talk about this, and I've, I've heard Melissa talk about this perfect storm that's a brewing. Uh, listen, we had an 08 crisis, right, too big to fail. And, and so unfortunately, Americans have had a short-term memory of what ultimately caused that. And you have a president who, quite frankly, I think is aging and daughtering, and then you, you have uh, the Department of Treasury that's now just buying for him, as is the, the Fed. You have Congress with expenditures. You have a U.S. asset bubble that I think is easily ready to pop. And then you have China. China is that ever consistent group out there that's watching. They watched what we did in 08. They just had their possible too big to fail moment with Evergrande. By the way, assets of which may be held by organizations that hold assets in your 401k. Yeah. And, and what are they doing? We're going to let it fail. Get ready. All of this is brewing up. China is strategic in how they're doing it, and they may push us over the brink. Well, if they're holding the cards, that's not a situation that we want to be in. Melissa, do you think that's what could happen here? 
line is the market right now is falling. It's reacting negatively to this. This lays on the hands of the Biden administration and Nancy Pelosi. I don't think they're going to not pass the, the increase in the in, in the budget. They're going to pass that. They're going to raise the debt ceiling. But the market right now is falling and reacting negatively. And I think it's still going to react negatively, even if they end up passing that, because we're spending too much money. And that's the bottom line. All right. So it's Thursday. John, we needed a market correction. We needed a market correction before the pandemic. It yeah. was we were in extra innings already. That hasn't changed. We just kept the game going by throwing more money. We're building a bigger boat instead of patching the hole. Yeah. Well, when it comes to the debt ceiling, uh, it's Thursday at happy hour today. Every time you hear uh, someone on TV say, kick the can down the road, you got a drink. I know we're going to hear it a lot today. <laughs> I won't be in tomorrow. <laughs> Great to see you, Melissa and Seth. Thanks so much. All right, guys, stand by. We still have a whole new hour of John Bachman now still ahead. We got our friend Dave Rubin checking in from the Rubin Report. We're going to talk about all the insanity, not just with the trillions of dollars that Democrats want to spend, but also with the vaccine mandates. Don't go away.